Salutations, I'm Rick. Welcome to a little corner of my basement, which I call the clubhouse. I usually come down here, play, fiddle around on guitars, play a little bit of drums, hang out, record some demos, try to write some uh, very mediocre music. I don't know what day it is you're watching this video, but as we record it and produce it right now, it is January 27th, 2016. And it is a bit of a milestone day for me and my family as today would have been my grandpa Harvey Owens' 100th birthday. Woohoo! Happy birthday, Grandpa. Uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. He, he left us uh, many, many, a long time ago. Uh, I never really got to know him, actually. Uh, he passed away when I was about two years old. I have absolutely no memories of him, but he was someone I'd always kind of wanted to meet. But anyway, since it uh, would have been his 100th birthday, I kind of want to show you what my uh, most prized possession in the entire world is. And that would be his guitar. Uh, my grandpa Harvey, he was a self-taught musician. Uh, grew up, him and his friends would play music all the time. And, you know, other kids may play baseball, you know, football, whatever. Him and his friends played music. So all his life he played music. And from what I've been told, he was an excellent guitarist. And I, I, I wish I'd got to hear him play. But anyway, um, I, I am now the caretaker of his uh, guitar and uh, what you see here, his Fender Twin Amp. And I'll give you a little bit of the history. I'll try to play some notes for you. But anyway, this was his guitar that he had along with his Fender Twin Amp. And uh, it sounds something like this. I'm probably not doing the guitar justice. You know, I, I kind of have a classic rock background. Uh, I'm all about the uh, heavy distortion overdrive power chords, and uh, I don't think you use any of that in jazz music. Now, I think Grandpa, he played, and I talked to people who knew him, and I'd ask him, well, what kind of music, what songs did he play? And of course, everyone draws a blank. I understand, I do that too. People say, hey, Rick, what songs do you play on guitar? And you just draw a blank. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know. But uh, I did find out he, he played things such as, you know, Stardust, Take the A-Train. Nothing that I really play. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know if my grandpa would be proud of what I'm doing. But uh... anyhow, this is the Gibson ES5. I've done a bit of research on it. And it was first introduced by Gibson Guitars in 1949. Um, it followed a EL model that was a jazz, acoustic jazz guitar, but this was the first one that Gibson introduced with three pickups. So you've got three different volume knobs for each pickup, and then you've got a master tone. So I'll, uh, let's turn them all down and see how they sound. Now I've got this thing just running straight from, from uh, my grandpa's guitar. Hey, and check this out too. See this chord? This is my dad, circa 1970s, when he got this. Still sounds great. And then, of course, the Fender Twin Amp, which is about from the 1950s originally, and it's also complete with the cigarette burns on top because my grandpa smoked pretty heavily. Um, in fact, I was gigging with this thing a few years back at Dennis's house, and I found some uh, burnt uh, matchsticks in the back of it. It's kind of weird. If I can find some, I'll pull them out and show you. Um, this is just straight guitar straight into the amp. There's no effects pedals or no hocus pocus magic. You're getting it's just straight sound. But uh, later on, this the Fender Twin Amp doesn't have any reverb. So sometimes I'll run it through a delay pedal and it gives it a little bit of reverb sound and we'll experiment with that later on. We'll get to that later on. Go. So, here's the first one. Should be this one. Playing a C chord for those who want to play along at home. We'll do the middle one. And then. So, and then we got the tone. That's how that sounds. This here is a uh, tremolo bar. 
uh, it's the Bigsby, and the story that I'd heard, and I think my Aunt Faye is the one that told me this story, is after a gig, my grandpa sat the guitar down, it's the end of the night, they're packing away, and someone backed up their truck and hit it, and he just about <laughs> freaked or cried or did something because it damaged the guitar, but when he had it repaired, he had this put on instead, because I don't, this is not stock from the original ES500. Excuse me, the ES5 right here, and this is a sound that kind of give you some of that little 50s feel. Here we'll... That's what that does. It's not magic. Now this was the precursor to what was known as the Switchmaster or the ES5 Switchmaster. That debuted, and if I'm trying to remember, I don't have my notes in front of me, if I remember that was in about 1955 when that came out. And about the biggest difference of that one was, is they had a, a little toggle switch down around in here, which would turn off, turn one, two or three, just an assortment of different pickups. Instead of using volume control, you could just turn, turn on or off the actual pickup you wanted to. And that was the Switchmaster. Hey, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Billy Cook at Cook Guitars. I took it to him a while back for him to uh, kind of restore it um, in a little bit. Uh, he, he cleaned up the, the screws in here and the uh, pickups. Uh, I had him add a pick guard on here. That's this part right here. Uh, for some reason, I don't know the background, don't know the story. Uh, when I got this guitar, it, it wasn't on there at all. It was it's absent. I, I had him add this piece on there uh, as he looked at other old ES5 guitars and matched it up. Did a great job. I mean, he fixed the fretboards and whatnot, and uh, um, still sounding good after 60 years. Thank you, Billy, of Cook Guitars out there in uh, Bartonville and Glassford. Had to give him a plug. And another thing I probably need to show you, just to, just to demonstrate how much Grandpa played this thing, and I'll try to get up here if you can see it, the wear marks on the back of the guitar. You can kind of see where his, his thumb went. And that's a lot of playing. So, but just to give you a sample, here's what the Fender Twin Amp sounds like. Without any kind of reverb delay. And using my uh, MXR Carbon Copy Analog Delay pedal. Add a little tremolo. Or whammy bar, some people like to call it. But you're saying, hey, Rick, why don't you play us something? See how this goes. has done throughout the years is give each guitar a serial number that you can trace and see when that guitar was produced. So I found in here, uh, it's got a number, and as soon as I can find it in a light, it is uh, uh, A-4489. Now you go on the internet or whatever and uh, you, you can look up a listing of how, how to follow these, these numbers and whatnot. And I have found the, uh, the Blue Book of Electric Guitars, uh, the Gibson ser Serialization. And what I found was that uh, the white oval labels were used on instruments from 1902 to 1954. Now, if you look in here, it's a white oval label. Uh, and you have to look in here. This is what they call it. Man, you can't see that, can you? This is what they call an F-hole right here. So... On F-hole instruments, it is visible through the upper F-hole. F-hole. That sounds kind of dirty, doesn't it? However, the second type of serial numbers used started with an A prefix and ran from 1947 to 1961. And going by this chart, 
it appears this guitar was built in 1950. Now, that leads me to think, for some reason I was thinking Grandpa Harvey acquired this in 1956, so it leads me to think, if I'm right with that, it leads me to think that he bought this used. Anyhow, the ES5 line came out in 1949. This is one of the really early models of it. Okay, check this out. That is a matchstick that I found in the back of the Fender Twin Amp, which is probably used to light one of Grandpa's cigarettes. Cool.